Is hellfire something to fear? Is there any reason to fear the prospect of eternal torture in hell? The Bible teaches no such thing. What sort of a God would punish unbelievers with eternal pain? It is certainly not the God of the Bible, who according to Ezekiel 33 verse 11, has no pleasure in the death of the wicked. Endless torture is not a just punishment for the sins of a few years of mortal life, nor can it be reconciled with the character of a righteous and loving God. Idolaters cast children into the fire and sacrifice to Moloch in Bible times. And yet God condemned this in Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 31 as something I did not command, nor did it enter my mind. God would not do what is far worse, and that is for eternity. The Bible does not teach many of the things that it is commonly believed to contain, and hellfire is one of them. Attention to the real meaning of Bible words and recognising the use of figurative language would avoid much misunderstanding. The tragedy is that hellfire doctrine, which puts people off religion, need never have arisen if men had confined their ideas to what the Bible teaches about hell. In the Bible there is a place known as hell, but there is no place for eternal torment for people who have died. The Old Testament word translated hell is from the Hebrew Sheol, meaning the place of the dead or the grave. And the same meaning applies to the Greek word Hades in the New Testament and in the Greek Old Testament. Hell in the Bible is none other than the grave, the place where men and women are laid out of sight in the unconsciousness of death. The English word hell itself means a hidden or covered place. According to the Bible, both good and bad people go to hell or the grave. For Isaiah 53 verse 9 says that Jesus made his grave with the wicked, and of the wicked themselves it is said in Psalm 31 verse 17, let them be silent in the grave. In death, the body returns to dust, the spirit returns to God who gave it, and no thinking part remains to feel anything. Psalm 146 verse 4 says the dead know not anything. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verses 5 and chapter 12 verse 7 says in that very day his thoughts perish. The righteous can go to hell, the grave, and come out again. Because God says in Hosea 13 verse 14, I will ransom them from the power of the grave, or Sheol. I will redeem them from death. The righteous will be saved from the grave by resurrection, just as Jesus was. His lifeless body was in hell for three days, because according to Acts 2 verse 31, it says his soul was not left in hell, neither did his flesh see corruption. Until the resurrection, both righteous and wicked remain in the same place, the grave. Daniel 12 verse 2 says, Many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Bible teaching is that our mortal lives end in death. Both righteous and wicked remain dead until resurrection and judgment occur at the return of Christ. The outcome will, will be eternal life for some, and a shameful end for others, but no endless suffering. Another word translated hell is Gehenna, meaning Gai, or Valley, of Hinnom, a place near Jerusalem in which fires were kept burning to consume rubbish. This word indicates total destruction. Jesus taught that God is the only one to fear. For in Matthew 10, verse 28, he said, Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both body and soul in hell or Gehenna. Sodom suffered the punishment of eternal fire, says Jude 7, and suffered it when it was turned to ashes. But it is not still burning. 
Fire, in fact, is used in scripture for utter destruction, not for preservation in torment. God punishes sin with death, in which there is no consciousness. Scriptural examples of divine judgment show that the punishment is irresistible and swift and decisive, but never cruelly prolonged. Destruction is sudden, but its effects last forever.